In the second video in the series, we're dealing with the topic of dynamic ranges. So firstly, what is a dynamic range? Why is it so powerful in Excel VBA? Let's get back into the file. What we notice about the file, and we noticed this in the first video, is that there's different amounts of data on each sheet. I'm just on the Texas sheet here. We've got about 40 rows of data. Moving on to the NYC sheet, we can see we've got about 29, 28 rows of data there. So there's different numbers of rows of data on each sheet. But we don't want to be writing different routines or manually putting references into VBA. We want a single line of code that can handle data sets of different sizes, a dynamic line of code. That's what we're looking for. Let's get back into the uh, Visual Basic Editor and let's think about how we're gonna put this line of code together. Now we do need a key foundational concepts here. If you've watched other videos on the channel, you might be familiar with range, range, range. This is one of our key foundational concepts in Excel VBA. When we're dealing with a range with multiple rows in that might be dynamic, this is the concept we need. We're saying to Excel, it's a range and it has a starting point. This is the starting point and it has an end point. And we could use static values A1, static references A1, A20. We're going to use one static reference and one dynamic reference. Right, let's get into it. So we're going to say range. So we're saying to Excel, we're referring to a range. What's the reference for the beginning of the range? Let's get into the file, look at the file quickly. Now we have consistent sheet layout. Consistent sheet lay layout, which is um, a quality of a good spreadsheet, we could say. And we can see each sheet, the data starts on cell B2. That makes things easiest for us. Thank you, Eric. So we can say range B2 as a starting point here, then comma, and then it's gonna, and then um, speech marks, of course, close the bracket and comma. Then we're thinking, where does the range end? Here it gets more difficult because on some sheets it ends here, on other sheets it ends here, it changes for each sheet. How are we gonna deal with that? Again, this is something we do use on the channel quite a lot. We're gonna say range B2, so the same reference, then this magical line of code, so powerful, dot end Excel down. So that's saying to Excel, start at cell B2 and just work down until you get to an empty cell. That empty cell could be two rows away, 200 rows away or 200,000 rows away, it doesn't matter. So this is the mechanism that gives the code its dynamic quality. It, could, it means that the code can handle different data sets. Super powerful. And then we need dot select on the end there. So what are we expecting to happen? Again, we're gonna save the file, control S and step through the code. We're expecting to step through each sheet. That's what we did in the first video go through each sheet and then select the data. And our selection is gonna be 100% accurate, precise, starting from B2 and going down to wherever the data ends. So let's get into the VBA editor. Stepping through the code, you can use debug step into. I'm just gonna use the F8 key on the Windows PC. We're, we're on the third sheet already. And then we're, we're looking to select the data. Okay, we've selected something scrolling down and I can see that selection is accurate. F8 key, going to the next sheet. I can see the selection is accurate, going to the next sheet. So we're now on the AZ sheet. Again, the selection is accurate. Is it gonna work for the last sheet? Onto the final sheet, the MO sheet, and the selection is accurate there too. Okay, so dynamic selection. It just, just looks like a line of code, doesn't it? But it's super powerful. It means you can deal with data sets of variable size. It's gonna take your code into the next level if you haven't seen that before. Just while we're here, we're gonna deal with an additional construct that's gonna help us simplify things uh, in the long run. We're gonna use with, end with. That's gonna give our code a more dynamic quality. Ultimately, we don't want to have to select the sheets. If when you're programming code, you're selecting sheets, selecting cells, selecting workbooks, it's really slowing the routine down. It's not an efficient way to do that. We call that kind of referencing direct referencing because you're directly selecting a sheet. We don't want to do that. We want to use remote referencing. 
remote referencing, get the things done without selecting objects, much more efficient. To do that, we're going to say with and end with. So with sheets counter and end with afterwards. And we can now delete this line of code, which was selecting the sheets. And we're going to say, um, just put a dot select in here, just, just to demonstrate how this works. I'm going to briefly uh, just comment out, make this line of code an annotation, just to show how with end with is working. So what are we expecting to happen? If you've never seen this before, you might be saying, well, it just says select. So what is it selecting? Well, because of with and end with, Excel is going to take this method and connect it to whatever, whatever object we've defined at the top there. Let's see it in action, F8 key. So we're now going to select the third sheet in the file. Okay, selecting the fourth sheet in the file. It's working in the same way, but it allows the coding to be more efficient and for us to use this remote referencing uh, technique. And then, yeah, in future videos, in the next video maybe, we're going to make some changes to this code to ensure that that is going to work. Actually, let's do it now. We've got a little bit more time here. So we're going to take this line of code. We're just going to put a dot in front. And we know that when we put the dot in, that's going to connect the objects here. So Excel is going to read sheets counter dot range. So it's going to go to the counter sheet. It's going to know that we want to work with the counter sheet here. I've put the dots in again. So this is difficult to spot, but absolutely crucial. Put the dots in again here. And again, that's going to allow with and end with uh, to work. Now, we're not going to go any further with this, but make sure you've got with and end with in there. Make sure you have uh, make sure you have the full stops in, but you don't need to do anything else yet. This line of code, um, this line of code might uh, return an error at the moment. We're not going to worry about it yet. Soon or in the next video, we're going to see how we're going to put another loop into the code to loop through each cell that we've uh, defined in our dynamic range, loop through each cell, do something to it in order to move towards having this list of unique names. I'll see you in the next video.